it's Maddie from Three Ginger Sisters, and welcome back to my bookshelf. Today I'm here to talk to you about a very wonderful thing. <sighs> Coffee. Or more specifically, the caffeine and how it affects your brain. Let's go. Now, before we can talk about caffeine, we have to talk about my good friend, adenosine. Adenosine is a chemical that slowly accumulates in your brain while you're awake. When the adenosine is received by your brain, it slows down brain activity and decreases alertness, thus making you feel tired. While you're asleep, the adenosine concentration decreases, thus when you wake up, you feel alert and rested. Now, on to caffeine. I feel like I'm always drinking coffee while making videos, but it actually makes sense for this one, so... Cheers. But caffeine is very similar in structure to adenosine. So adenosine receptors will receive the caffeine, but because it's not adenosine, you don't feel tired. Instead, it makes your body produce more adrenaline, which makes your heart beat faster, and more dopamine, which makes you feel happy. Depending on how much caffeine you have, it can completely block your adenosine receptors, making it so that you have physical inability to receive adenosine so you don't ever feel tired for at least six hours, because that's the half-life of caffeine. There is a lethal dose for caffeine, but it's really high. It's 150 milligrams per kilogram of your body. So if you weighed 70 kilograms or 155 pounds, you would need to consume 14,000 milligrams of caffeine, which is a lot, seeing that there's only about 150 milligrams in your average cup of coffee. Your stomach could not physically handle this because you'd need to drink all of the coffee in very rapid succession. So if you're the type of person that drinks four cup cups of coffee with Red Bull a day, like, you're, you're fine. And way before you would die of a caffeine overdose, you would start vividly hallucinating, so you'd probably stop drinking coffee anyway. Although caffeine is a drug, meaning any substance alters your brain chemistry, it is not addictive. Although caffeine appears to have mild versions of the effects of addictive drugs, such as withdrawal when you stop using it, or built up tolerance over time, it does not technically classify as an addictive drug. The authors of the American Journal of Drug and Alcohol Abuse say, it differs because it's not a compulsive behavior to use it, it's more of a dedicated habit. And it lacks the reward circuits that other addictive drugs do. And that, my friends, is how coffee works. Or Coke, or Red Bull, or tea, or whatever your preferred form of caffeine is. Thank you for watching! If you like this video, be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up. It makes my life significantly cooler. If you like this video and want to see others like it, you can click right here for the link to the playlist of other nerdy vlogs that I've done, or the links will be down in the doobly doos. If there's something that you want me to explain, please leave a comment down below or tweet at me. Those links will also be down in the doobly doos. We post a new video every single Saturday, so if you want to be the first to know when a brand new video comes out, you can click this button right here to subscribe. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Shine on. We post a new video every single Saturday, so if you want to be the first 